け So let's talk about that. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to my little garden. In today's video, we will be exploring the Abyss server and why it's an important post game resource. Once you beat the final boss of Hacker's Memory, you will unlock a new mission that will be posted in the BBS. But before you look into that, let's make a few preparations first. We are going to be facing two virus-type bosses, so it will be in our best interest to take with you some powerful vaccine-type Digimon. The bosses you'll be facing are going to be particularly sturdy, so bring with you vaccine types that can use strong piercing moves. You have a handful of good options to work with here, but the most effective are Alphamon or Yukin and Oryumon. Of all the vaccine types with piercing moves, Alphamon or Yukin has by far the strongest one. Technically, there's nothing stopping you from bringing two of them. Oryumon, on the other hand, may have a weaker pierce, but his support skills give your team a higher critical hit rate, which does make it better than the other vaccine candidates. Oryumon is also much easier to raise since it naturally learns Acceleration Boost. Alright, speaking of movesets, your piercers should have access to Acceleration Boost. This is mandatory. I mean it. Another highly useful skill they should have is Chain Max, which allows them to boost each other's damage without needing to set up an Acceleration Boost. This won't come up as often, but it is nice to have when the opportunity does present itself. Alright, so those are two Digimon at the front, but you need one more. My suggestion for your final team member, Sister Mon Blanc Awakened. Yes, she is here to abuse Protect Wave. This is an incredibly powerful skill that blocks status effects and can completely nullify incoming damage that the AI boss monsters can't really play around. So, your Abyss Server core consists of Sister Mon Blanc Awakened and two Piercers. Your Digimon should also be fully trained before you take on this mission. In order for Sister Mon to use Protect Wave as optimally as possible, she should ideally be using it after her other teammates finish their turns. In other words, you will want her teammates to have a higher speed stat than her. Train those stats accordingly. For my team comp here, I invested 30 points of speed for Alphamon or Yukin, and 20 points of speed for Oryumon. This puts them just above Sister Mon's uninvested speed stat, and the rest of those stat points were put into their attack. As for Sister Mon Blanc, I gave her plus 200 HP, plus 30 SP, then the rest on her intelligence stat. Then I gave her two SP attach A's to give her even more SP to work with. I'll be honest, the stat distribution could have been better optimized for her, but this is what I ended up working with. I gave Alphamon and Oryumon large capacity USBs, but this won't really matter on the first encounter, so I should have given them something else like a Panic Barrier DX or a Dark Guard DX. Now that we're done with the preparations, it's time to take on this mission. Since you're able to take cases again, log into the PC and the game will tell you that a new case has been added. Open the BBS and look for a mission called Invitation to the Abyss. Once you accept it, you will automatically be transported to the Digilab, where Mirei briefs you about the case. She will give you the URL to access the Abyss server, so exit the Digilab, use the PC again, and this time log into Eden. Enter the Abyss server, where you can see Venom Myotismon blocking the path forward. Like a jerk! You can make some final preparations before you challenge him, but otherwise make your way towards him to trigger the boss fight. Venom Myotismon begins by using Number of the Beast, followed by 6 actions, 6 boosts. This is your warning. Every 6th action, he triggers Raise the Roof, which slightly heals him while also giving himself stat boosts. 
If you take too long, the stat boosts will become so problematic that he can even one-shot vaccine types. Do not let him make it this far. Set up your piercers with acceleration boost, then shield them with protect wave until it's their turn again. Your piercing moves should do significant damage to his HP. It should be low enough that you can easily finish him off without needing to set up acceleration boost a second time. After defeating Venomiotismon, you will automatically be transported back to the Digilab to report back to Mirei. She will consider the case to be solved, but notes that the evil energy she detected has weakened but not completely gone. Should you make subsequent visits to the Abyss server, you can call upon one of your allies to lend you some aid. More on this later. When the cutscene finishes, you will be taken out of the Digilab. Use the PC again to access the BBS and officially complete the case. You are now free to go back and explore the Abyss server. Along with Sister Mon Blanc and two vaccine piercers, you should have with you a party of fully trained Digimon. On your first revisit, don't worry much about item drops just yet. You will also notice that your friends are now hanging out in the plaza. You can pick any of them to join you in the Abyss. The most recommended pick is Erika, since she can both heal and buff the whole party. Make your way through the floors while picking up items scattered across the area along the way. Floors 1, 11, and 21 are your rest areas. This is where you can have access to the Digilab and heal your party or exit the server entirely. These are also the only areas in the entire server where you're allowed to save your progress. All the other floors are replicas of random places you've already been to. Make sure to turn on High Security Level 3 as you explore through the floors. Floors 10, 20, and 30 are the boss levels. The bosses that appear on floors 10 and 20 are rather unremarkable. When you reach the 21st floor, this will be your last chance to heal up and save your progress. Make your way through the remaining floors to finally encounter Grand Drachmon. Your first encounter with Grand Drachmon is relatively straightforward, so use the same team you had when you fought Venomiotismon. He begins the fight with Immortal King, which applies Safety Guard on himself so he can survive a finishing blow. He will be using a variety of physical and magical attacks as well as status moves to annoy your party with. When you manage to break his guard, he will trigger regeneration to heal back 3000 HP. If you allow him to survive too many turns after this, he will reapply Immortal King once again, turning this into an endless fight. Defeat him as quickly as possible to prevent this from happening. As long as you set up properly with Acceleration Boost, your Vaccine Piercer should be able to quickly finish him off. After his defeat, a cutscene will trigger. Then you will be transported back to the first floor. Alright, you've finished the prerequisites. From now on, you will be able to challenge Grand Drachmon over and over again. But of course, he will also be harder and more annoying to deal with. But also, he will now have the chance to drop the extremely valuable Master Barrier. Baby, this is what you came for. Before you take him on again, here are some extra preparations you should make. This is the point in the game where you can stop being stingy with your item use, stock up on lots of healing and SP recovery items, and use them liberally. And as for your team, it should be in your best interest to bring with you two Black King Numamons, both equipped with three large capacity USBs each. These two are enough to guarantee that Grand Drachmon will drop an item. He will either drop a Brave Point A or a Master Barrier. I recommend that you reset the game and fight him again if he drops a Brave Point A. So about Grand Drachmon. Yes, he will definitely be more difficult than the first encounter, but also he now has different fighting styles that you may face. There's a version of him where he focuses on using powerful single target moves. There's another that prefers to attack your whole party at once and can even cause annoying knockbacks. Worst of all, he will also have more consecutive turns to use against you. 
Regardless of how he fights, he will still attempt to use the Immortal King regeneration loop, so you need to end things as quickly as possible. But now, you've got to have good timing as well. Before you deal the finishing blow, you should also switch in the two Black King Numamons I mentioned earlier. You will not be able to increase his drop rate without them, so it's imperative that you get the snails out just before you beat him. This is going to be incredibly tough to pull off consistently, which is why I recommend using recovery items liberally to give yourself plenty of chances. If you do manage to pull this off, he will drop an item no matter what. If he doesn't drop the Master Barrier, reset the game. This is why it's important to save on the 21st floor. That way, you are not sending yourself back to the very beginning. One last thing. There is a version of him where he uses Crystal Revolution that causes no damage. This may sound like a good thing, but I'm telling you, this is the absolute worst version to fight against. If he uses Crystal Revolution and cause zero damage to your party, he will be reducing all damage he subsequently takes into a tiny amount, which almost guarantees him the regeneration loop. If this is the version that you encounter, give up. Reset the game and start again on the 21st floor. This version is not worth the time and effort. After a few encounters, you'll get used to his shenanigans, and soon enough you'll have the master barriers you'll need. We have made it to the end of the video. This may all seem tedious, which it totally is, but the master barrier is, after all, the single best equipment in the game. For my own sake, I only fought Grand Drachmon enough times until I had all the extra master barriers that I would ever need, which isn't a lot, mind you. Completing both games means you will have at least three, so you won't even need to have much more. For your sake, you shouldn't have to fight him too many times either. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content. Thank you so much for watching, and train hard, tamers!